How come you can take a piece of foil out of a hot oven and touch it, but you can't do the same with a baking tray? Is one hotter than the other? Come to think of it, what is the difference between... <laughs> Well, heat is energy. If something is hot, it means its constituents are moving about frenetically with a lot of energy. And if something contains a lot of this thermal energy, it has the ability to do things like rip apart your skin cells. So the ability for something to burn you depends on the amount of heat it contains. But a piece of foil and a heavy tray, both taken out of the oven are at the same temperature. So how can they contain different amounts of heat? Well, heat and temperature are subtly different. Consider what happens, for example, when you heat up water in a kettle. Water is made up of molecules, each containing two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. When heat is transferred to water, the result is the motion of these molecules. That's what heat is. It's the motion of molecules or whatever constituents make up a substance. <laughs> but temperature is different. While heat refers to the total amount of motion the water molecules have, Temperature refers to a specific type of that motion. So how many ways can a water molecule move? How many degrees of freedom does it have? Well, obviously they can move around in space. If they're doing this, we say they have kinetic energy. And since there are three distinct directions in which they can move, we say they have three translational degrees of freedom. But there are other ways that water molecules can move too. For example, they could be rotating around some axis or their bonds could be vibrating. And there are three degrees of freedom for each of these types of motions. Three ways that the water molecules could be rotating. And three ways that they could be vibrating. So if I add some heat to a glass of water, that added energy is gonna make the molecules move in nine different ways. That's a lot of ways. It's like if my friend was a really bad ice skater and I gave them a shove. There's gonna be a lot of different types of motion. And importantly, there's a theorem called the equipartition theorem, which states that any heat that you add to a substance is shared equally among its degrees of freedom. In fact, there is exactly this much heat for every degree of freedom. Here, this K is just a conversion factor called Boltzmann's constant. This is the temperature, and that is a two. So if we compare water to a liquid without any vibrational or rotational degrees of freedom, something like liquid argon, then if those substances have the same amount of heat, the argon atoms will be traveling three times as fast as the water molecules on average. Whoops, uh, what I meant to say here was that the argon atoms have on average three times the kinetic energy as the water molecules, not that they're traveling three times as fast. Why? because the thermal energy in the case of argon all goes into those translational degrees of freedom. If a water molecule is like an ice skater, an argon atom is like an ice skater wearing a straight jacket. So finally we get to temperature. How is it defined? Well, it is the average amount of kinetic energy the molecules of a substance possess. It only cares about the translational degrees of freedom. Vibrations and rotations, they, they don't matter, get rid of them. They don't contribute to a substance's temperature. But the equipartition theorem says that if I add some heat to a glass of water, that energy spreads through all of the degrees of freedom evenly, not just the translational ones. So I need to add a lot of heat to water to raise its temperature, because some of that energy is wasted making the molecules spin and dance on the spot. This property of a substance is characterized by a number we call the specific heat capacity. This is the amount of heat energy you need to put into one gram of that substance to raise its temperature by one degree. Water has a high specific heat capacity because of all of its extra degrees of freedom, whereas liquid argon has a much lower specific heat capacity. Again, if you want your ice skating friend to go fast, you need to push him much harder if some of the force from that shove is gonna go into making him spin and wobble. Something else that has a low specific heat capacity is aluminium. That means that boiling water has a lot more heat energy packed into it than aluminium does when they're both at the same temperature. So it's easier for water to burn you than it is for aluminium. You can actually feel this for yourself, although obviously don't dunk your hand in boiling water. But if you let your baking tray reach the same temperature as hot, but not boiling water, the tray doesn't feel as hot as the water. But this doesn't answer the question we started with. If you have a tray and a piece of foil made out of the same material, why does one burn you while the other doesn't? 
This difference is mostly due to a difference in mass. If you halve the amount of stuff that you have, then you only need half as much heat to raise its temperature, no matter what the substance is. So foil being at the same temperature as the tray, but being much lighter, only contains a fraction of the tray's heat. That's why foil doesn't burn you when you take it out of the oven. On top of this, the foil cools down much more quickly because it has a greater surface area than the tray relative to its volume. So more of it is in contact with a cool environment like your kitchen. And also, you're only touching a small section of the foil. If you came into contact with more of it, you get a greater dose of heat. So foil doesn't burn you when you take it out of the oven because it only contains a small amount of heat, even if it's at a high temperature. It has both a small specific heat capacity and a small mass. And if it doesn't contain a lot of heat, it doesn't have the capacity to burn you. And that is pretty cool.